before I start my session, uh, okay, uh, before I start my session, let me share my screen and then we slowly uh, proceed. Uh, every time, whenever I do a session with IoT, I'm always allotted a second, uh, second half session, but still, I hope that I'm able to live up to the expectation of my people here. Just one minute. Can you all see my screen? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Uh, now, good afternoon once again to one and all present on this platform today. The topic that I have a lot that I have to deliver on is uh, known as a research ethics, a comprehensive guide for all. Now, I'm sure that we are all a part of the academic fraternity. And we as a fraternity member, uh, we've got certain responsibility towards research what all things we have to keep in mind, what we don't have to keep in mind, you know, how did it all evolve? So many other things are there. We, we shall be covering all those things in uh, coming time. But it, it is said that, you know, a smile is a handshake with your face. I'm sure uh, post COVID, nobody would like to uh, shake hands with people. But yes, um, I give a big, big smile to all my August uh, fraternity members who are here on this platform today. So I welcome you all to the session. And I just hope that again, um, I'll reiterate, I just hope that I'm able to live up to the expectation of my people and of course my IoT uh, people as well. Now, uh, I really don't want that, you know, immediately as I have just come and I don't want you all to get bombarded with a lot of ethics and a lot of research and a lot of things related with ethics. I don't want to do that. Uh, I always believe on one thing that we can always go ahead once we can understand each other. So now before I proceed, I'll take uh, two, three minutes and then, you know, I would like to get a small round of introduction. For, uh, um, uh, I'm sure my introduction has been given to you by ma'am. But I would like to get a small introduction of each one of you who is here today. And I'll just take two minutes. Maybe you can tell us uh, what is your name, uh, where are you working, and anything else that you would like to uh, tell us. I'll just take two minutes. Only then we start. Uh, all right. So shall we start? Yeah. yeah, uh, from, yeah. Where, uh, from where do we begin? Uh, either you want me to take out the names or you can um, uh, tell no, me no, about the spell our name. All right. And not only the name. names, sir. Not only the <laughs> names, but yes, uh, something about yes, you also. Definitely, ma'am. Definitely. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, good good afternoon to everyone, and especially Rakhi, ma'am. Thank uh, you. Uh, Given an opportunity to be introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Professor Satyendra Kumar Sharma. I'm working as a director in an engineering college, Alwar, uh, Modern right. Institute of Technology and Research Center. From last 33 years, I am in academics. All right. Uh, I'm a man of electronics and computer science engineering. Mm -hmm. I have done double PhD. Luckily, uh, when uh, I passed out from IIT Durki in 92, uh, after mm -hmm. MTech, I was looking for my PhD. But uh, okay. at that time, the opportunity was not available or the, some limitations of the resources or universities. I didn't got the chance to do um, tech, uh, mm -hmm. PhD at the time. But later on in 2011 and 15, I have completed our PhD and got mm -hmm. a good exposure of research and other area. But I keen to know what are the latest tools and techniques available here by which we can help to our research scholars. Correct. But sir, I'm I'm afraid. But today's topic it's all related with ethics. And if if I'm not mistaken, we had an earlier round of uh, introduction when we were talking about team building. If I'm not uh, wrong. Yes, yes, no problem. We will enjoy. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, you for the confidence. Thank you thank so you much, man. sir. Welcome to the uh, presentation. All right. The next one, please. Abhinaya S. I'll just take out the name. Abhinaya S. Okay. Amol Patil. Yes, Amol, sir. Yes, Amol, yes. This is Amol Pali from the College of Pharmacy, Sangli. We, uh, it's from Maharashtra. And uh, since mm -hmm. 29 years working in we started with lecture and now presently in the lecture. So your voice is a bit cracking. Uh, your voice is a bit cracking, sir. Yeah. Huh. Yes, sir. A little, yeah. huh, little, little, little. Huh. Yes. Yes, sir. So, myself, I'm from Apache Birnali College. 
All right, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anandi, Shakti, madam. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. All right, all right. Okay, Evelyn, madam. Jeba, madam. Evangeline, madam. Jayantha, Mary, madam. Yes, yes, Evelyn, madam. Yes, 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 please. Ma'am, I'm Evelyn, uh, working as working as assistant professor in Western College of Education, Chennai, ma'am. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, ma'am. All right. Okay, welcome to the session, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jeeva Evangeline, madam. Okay. Jayanta Mary, madam. Uh, good All afternoon, right. ma'am. I'm uh, yes, yes, ma'am. <coughs> Assistant Professor of yeah. Education, Western College yes, of Education, ma'am, Chennai. All right, Chennai. All right, ma'am. Welcome, welcome. Okay, Kamla Priya, madam. All right, Christina, madam. Okay, Lingam Lakshmi Devi, madam. Mm -hmm. Mansi Dixit, madam. Good afternoon, yes, Mansi, ma'am. Ma Good afternoon, everyone. Ma uh, okay. I am assistant professor Mansi Dixit, working in Vedanta College, Vithalwadi, mm -hmm. in Maharashtra, from last two years. Okay. You're, you're from Maharashtra, huh? Okay, welcome, ma'am. Yes, welcome, ma Ansi, madam. Okay, Nimisha Ganesh, madam. Okay, uh, Prasi VK, Satend Kumar, sir. Okay, Selva Kumari, madam. Suja Selvi, uh, Selva Mani, madam. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. This is Dr. Das Suja, assistant professor, government arts college. Uh -huh. uh, Tamil Nadu, ma'am. From Noida? Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu, ma'am. Tamil Nadu. Oh, oh, oh yeah, sorry. Yes, uh, nice. <laughs> okay. Here, yeah, same here, ma'am. Same here. Yeah, Swati thank Priya, madam. Yeah. Swati Priya, madam. Okay. Uh, Ujwala Jadhav, sir. No, myself, Ujwala. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry, I'm... sorry, sorry. I stand corrected. <laughs> it's okay, it's I stand okay. corrected. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, myself, Ujwala. I'm from Pune, uh -huh. Maharashtra. I'm working as an assistant lecturer, assistant professor in uh, nursing college. Uh -huh. And uh, I have I am a MSc okay. nurse in OBGY, but right now doing my PhD. So, I... Okay. So, you need to know about, about the about ethics the a lot then. <laughs> That's why I have joined. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. The, the topic is not on the tools today. Yeah, the topic is not on the tools, but it's more <laughs> on the ethics. I'll be discussing things related with that, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah, last yeah. one to go, uh, yeah, Veera Mani, madam. Okay. I think she's uh, okay. All right. So now that was uh, just a small uh, round of introduction. Uh, I wanted to have an ice breaking session. And I think uh, if I'm not wrong, I already had this introduction when I was taking up my uh, team building session. And uh, today um, the session is on ethics, ethics and research. And um, I hope again, uh, I'm able to deliver what you are expecting from me today. All right. So basically, uh, when we talk about what is ethics and what is research, I'm sure everybody coming from the uh, fraternity, academic fraternity, we all know uh, that we do different kind of researches. And since then, on um, today, uh, we have got people from different platform also. Uh, somebody's from nursing, somebody's from management, somebody's from administration, somebody's from pharmacy. So we have got a diverse group of uh, people. No matter in whichever group you are, uh, you are supposed to uh, do research and of course there are certain ethics which have to be taken into consideration when we basically talk about ethics is nothing but ethics is basically something which talks about the governance something which talks about the norms something which talks about the values something which talks about um, a behavior that we uh, one should expect or one should have now since we are talking in terms of um, 
our research. So definitely it will be in terms of our behavior, in terms of our principles, in terms of our application, uh, maybe in terms of how we are implementing research, uh, what kind of respect are we giving towards the society or maybe to others, what kind of resources we are using, and of course, what are the resource outputs. Now, there are different kind of misconducts that are basically conducted by the researchers in various fields. Now, that is what we are going to talk about, that basically ethics in research, it basically means that we are going to talk about the behavior, we are going to talk about the norms of conduct. Now, when we talk about norms, there are people, they get confused between two words. One is norms and one is rules. Now, rules and regulations, they are written. And norms, they are something which are unwritten. So when we talk about ethics, it is basically the norms of conduct that we should keep in mind when we are talking about research ethics. And of course, uh, we have to be very, very sure that we do not cause any harm to the participants who are helping us to conduct our research. We are not, uh, we are not causing any harm uh, to the people who are helping us to do our um, research, uh, maybe as a sign of respect or maybe as a part of our professional requirement or maybe when we are doing any kind of research for the purpose of getting funding. So we are going to talk about this um, research ethics. Now, this is what we've told you, that uh, ethics is something which we talk about in terms of norms of conduct. And norms is basically something which is uh, not written. A set of unwritten rules and regulation is known as norms. And of course, the kind of obligation that we owe towards the others who are helping us to uh, complete our research. That is what is uh, known as the ethics. And basically, when we talk about ethics, we have got, uh, we have to be considerate about everybody. It is just not we who is doing the research, but we have to be considerate towards the um, society, maybe towards the people, maybe towards the environment, maybe towards our friends, colleagues, everybody. So ethics is a very, very broad term which uh, we talk about. And slowly and steadily, I tell you what is basically ethics. But in research, there are certain principles that we need to keep in mind, and then we can uh, go ahead with the research. So now, basically, ethics has been defined uh, in different ways. Now, um, in ethics, uh, there are basically different kind of ethics. For example, there are meta ethics, there are normative ethics, and there are things which are related with applied ethics, there are professional ethics, a lot of different kind of ethics which are a part of it. Now, we talk about when we are talking about these three ethics that is meta normative or applied ethics they are basically the philosophical uh, branches of ethics before i proceed i just want to give you a better view of what is ethics is all about now for example if i talk about um, meta ethics uh, meta ethics basically it talks about the moral principles now, the, the, like for example you can see in my slide also is written that it's a branch of analytical philosophy that explores the status foundation and scope of moral values properties and the words study of moral thoughts and language ethical judgment what is right and what is wrong that is what is known as the meta ethics. Basically, it is more on more on moral. What is the moral judgment? What what kind of judgment do we owe uh, towards the different people? Basically, it's more of the uh, uh, you know why why are we using ethics? Yeah, what are the principles that we have to keep in mind? Those moral words uh, or moral judgment is what is meta ethics. Now, when we talk about the normative ethics, again, it's a branch of philosophy which tells us that how one should act in moral sense. How what how we should behave? Maybe when we are behaving with others, maybe with, when we are with kids, when we are with our seniors. So how we are supposed to act? That is what is known as the normative, uh, normative um, uh, ethics. And of course, uh, along with that, we have got something which is known as the applied ethics. Now, applied ethics is like ethics. We know that they are the norms of conduct. And then an apply ethics it says that how these applications, uh, these principles, they have to be applied in a public and a private life maybe in profession like for example we've got different people maybe in nursing maybe in pharmacy maybe in commerce maybe in management maybe in manufacturing maybe in material science maybe in computer science whatever ethics are applied everywhere apart from that there can be different kind of ethics as well for example uh, there can be some business ethics uh, there can be some professional ethics there can be some environmental ethics there can be some professional ethics no matter in whichever field one is, the ethics are always applied. For example, if I talk about the business ethics, so it means what kind of responsibility we owe towards our customers, our market players, our stakeholders, 
so on and so forth. So basically, ethics has been defined in these three format. That is meta, that is something which is related with, the, with the, your moral judgment. Normative, it basically talks about how should one uh, act in moral sense. And applied is how we are implying, applying these ethics in our personal and our professional life. Now, now, basically, what happens is this ethical uh, uh, theories, you know, we, we have to understand few things because when we talk about these ethics, if we are not familiar with these words, then anything which is related with the uh, ethics, it will be incomplete. Now, if you can see on my screen, I have given three uh, different uh, words. It is the deontology, utilitarianism, and virtue ethical theory. Now, what happens is that each theory emphasizes on a decision rule. Every theory, it, it emphasizes on something or the other. One has to understand what it is, what it is, uh, it is going to talk about. Again, um, ethic is something which is the norm of conduct, something which is the moral uh, language that we need to understand irrespective of the field in which we are. So uh, we have to uh, we have to correct apply uh, the moral notions that one have in their mind. It could be good or bad. It could be right or wrong. They can be different ways. Now, when we talk about deontology, it basically states that people should adhere to the obligation and duties when engaged in decision making. D stands for deontology. D stands for decision making. So now what happens is that we we are talking about the obligation for example for a simple example if i talk about if i say that a denatologist will always adhere to the promise which has been made to a friend now when we are making any promises to our friends our colleagues or where somebody very close now that is a kind of ethical it, it, it is out of our ethics that we have to understand no i am going to fulfill my promise now that kind of feeling when one has for a decision rule when when we are making decision that is known as uh, that is known as the uh, deontology deontology okay second one happens to be the uh, uh, for example uh, you know one, one has to understand one thing that you know whenever we are talking about these theories they can be conflicts also i will be giving you a few examples to make this term a little more clear how these problems arise and you know what are the conflicts that we face at times we want to have a very good uh, 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 our identity and but simultaneously it is not ethical it is unethical so what one should do so there are a lot of debates which have been held there are a lot of people who have been talking about but however everything depends upon the individual personality now now for example if i talk about you know if if a person is getting late for the duty so is a person uh, is he supposed to break the speeding rule for example if you're going on a road and it says that the maximum speed is 40 kilometers so I and mean, in case if you're in a hurry, if you have to, uh, you have to report, or maybe you have to punch, or maybe you have to give a biometric. Are you going to break those rules? Now, this is known as the uh, deontology. You know, for example, what obligations do I hold? How am I going to make the decision? If I get late for the office, that was also wrong. If I break the rules, that is also wrong. So I can either get late to the office or I do not break the rules. Now that is the what there, there lies the conflict. So that's what it says that sometimes the person duty is in conflict and we have to emphasize what kind of decision we are going to take. Then uh, secondly, we talk about the utilitarianism. Now it says that uh, here we talk about that how a person is going to predict the consequences of an action. Or in other words, we can say, what is the ability of the person to predict the consequences of an action? Now, for example, if you say that, uh, uh, for example, if you say that if if the if there's a person who happens to be the CEO of the company, now if he is the CEO of the company and if he is getting late for the meeting, so in case if he breaks the rule, is it okay? Now, again, a big question. Because here, in this kind of theory, in this utilitarianism, here the decision maker aims at achieving the maximum good. That I have to be a good person, I have to live up to the reputation, but simultaneously I have to be ethical in my behavior. Because whenever we talk about any of the theories, here we are talking about the decision rule. So is it okay if a person breaks a rule, if he happens to be the CEO of the company, he's a big person, he's a big name, and if he's rushing his car and because he's running late for the uh, duty. So definitely uh, he is in a dilemma. 
firstly uh, he he believes that he should follow the law as it is going to benefit the society because in case if he speeds up the car then um, if he breaks the speed they can there, there is more possibility of an accident on the other hand side simultaneously he believes that it is ethically correct to be there on time for the meeting now there are two things two two things he is on a tender cook uh, hook now now whether he believes that whether he should follow the rule or whether he should um, uh, you know be there on time for the meeting so that kind of when person faces that kind of dilemma that happens to be the utilitarianism uh, uh, utilitarianism uh, theory because here the person has the ability to predict the consequences if he is going to speed up he is going to land in trouble in case if he gets late so definitely it will be against his um, personality that okay uh, the person is supposed to be there on time for the meeting but the person is late okay and the third one it says that virtue ethical theory now here in this kind of ethical theory uh, it judges a person by his character rather than his action you know it says that you know character is something which goes a long way so it's basically uh, for example uh, for example if a person has plagiarized something you know some content has been plagiarized and you know that the person okay he is in the habit of plagiarism you know copying of the work of the others then the people are going to treat him differently but in case if your character is something know that you have committed a mistake for the first time, Time. and in uh, you have never ever committed that kind of mistake you no know, then people will behave in a different way so basically here in virtue ethical theory in ethics it says that the reputation is everything if the reputation is very good a person may be not hurt, judged harshly but on the flip side if the person's reputation is of misconduct or maybe you know um, a very bad character then definitely he can be judged harshly because of his past unethical behavior so unethical behavior i'm i'm trying to emphasize that you know if the kind of reputation that you have earned during the period of time it will be judged on that behavior pattern so definitely um, it says that um, uh, and this virtue or ethical theory that one has to have a very very good uh, name in the society in the professional era or maybe in the fraternity in case when people want so that you know things should go in a right way then uh, however there is a difference between uh, you know there are different uh, kind of research there there is a difference between the clinical and the social science research now i'm sure that people coming for example i am from social science uh, research so there are two kind of researches where is you know, like it talks about you know a research study which is intended to test safety quality effectiveness uh, maybe anything which is related with medical using human participants so that that kind is that kind of research is the clinical research and when we talk about the social research it is something which it talks about the recording and analysis of the data that it can lead to the generalization uh, and the principle building up of the theories or maybe uh, Uh, principles that are set for uh, greater generalization here when we talk about the social science research we do a lot of literature review uh, we are reviewing the data we are interviewing people we are getting we are uh, interacting with focus group people we are having obs observations administration a lot of things are a part of our social science so when either we are doing any kind of written, uh, review of literature either we are taking interviews whether we are talking about the focus groups whether we are doing any observation whether it is the administration of any survey instruments whichever part it is whichever part of this research activity we are dealing in we are supposed to follow the ethical behavior that is why i have uh, just uh, given this slide just to make a difference between the clinical research and the social science research irrespective of the um, kind of activities we are doing either in clinical or in social science the ethics have to be followed now here uh, again there are different kind of phases basically in the clinical trials there are four phases in the in the social research there are basically eight phases so either we are developing a theoretical framework we are follow we are supposed to follow the ethics if we are defining the problem we have to follow the ethics even if we are uh, identifying the problem we have to follow the ethics either we are da collecting data we have to follow the ethics so in in whichever activity we are engaged in we are supposed to follow the ethics for example if i talk about the 
data collection. I'm trying to collect data with the help of interviews. So I have, for example, I'm trying to delve down uh, into the, you know, uh, maybe the asset victims uh, who, who are the sufferers of these asset victims. Now, if I'm, if I'm going down and asking them, so I have, I owe certain behavior towards them. For example, it should be something which is related with honesty, something which is related with integrity, something which is relate, related with our confidentiality. There's so many principles that one has to keep in mind when we are talking about the ethics. So either if we are writing report also, we should know how we are supposed to write. There are certain ethics related with report writing. Maybe if we are doing any kind of analysis, the ethics says that okay we should not have uh, we should do we should not play uh, with the uh, figures there should not be uh, malfunctioning or there should not be manipulations involved even if we are talking about any any of the stages that we talk about so all these stages they uh, they we are talking about different kind of ethics that we have to keep in mind it can be something which can be related with honesty it can be related with, with uh, openness anything which can be related with intellectual property rights it can be related with our social responsibility it can be related with with our uh, transparency, confidentiality, something which may be related with discrimination, maybe something which is related with gender uh, diversity, something which can be related with legality, so on and so forth. So now uh, we have to keep in mind that we have to understand this. Then when we talk about the scientific research, again, uh, we have to follow these other principles, something which comes, something, the findings which can be generalized. It has to be quite objective. There has to be the originality of research work. This is one of the most important ethic behavior that a researcher should follow that, OK, whatever work you're doing, it should be your own. It should not be a CCP that is cut, copy, paste. So definitely the work has to be quite um, uh, original. In case if we are citing anybody's work, then we are supposed to take some permission maybe we are supposed to give the reference so on and so forth so this is all something which is related with scientific and research all right can you all hear me again hello yes, all right so uh, um, my my people my dear friends who are are you holding a pen is everyone holding a pen hello yes ma'am all right. So what you're supposed to do is I'll give you two minutes of time. OK, because I don't want to make this session a very boring one whenever I conduct any of the session on any of the topic. So I believe that, you know, people, they should be a part of it. Now, what what you're supposed to do, all those people who are there, I what you're supposed to do is uh, you are supposed to write maybe five ethical and unethical behavior as per your understanding. Okay, maybe what are what are what is good ethics or maybe what are bad ethics? Just five points. Is it clear? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'll give you two minutes of time. I will give you two minutes of time to each one of you. You are supposed to write five good ethic points and five bad ethic points. It can be related with anything. Am I clear? Yes. Okay, just two minutes of time to everyone. Whosoever is listening to me, whosoever is a part of this, uh, my session, just two minutes time to write down five good ethic points and five bad ethic points. I hope people are writing. Five good ethics point and five bad ethic points. All right. Has anyone written? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Huh. Have you written? I cannot see the names. So all those who have written uh, or yourself, please tell me. Respect. Honesty. Okay, let me also write down. Let me pick up a pen. Wait, one minute. One minute. Okay. Huh. Respect. 
honesty you're talking about good ma'am please tell me your name first vijay lakshmi okay like vijay lakshmi madam yes ma'am respect integrity integrity okay uh, comparison comparison okay hmm. honesty 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 okay in truthfulness truthfulness okay so five uh, good ethics are according to you as respect integrity compassion honesty and truthfulness ma'am five okay. negative bad ethics dishonesty disrespect the same opposite <laughs> okay that's a smart this move this okay. Okay. Uh, okay 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 all right all right thank you ma'am thank you jay lakshmi madam okay anyone thank else you. who has written this anyone else hello hello okay oh, no matter uh, no. ha huh. yes anyone no issues i'll come back any uh, all those who have written these points let's keep it in mind and we will uh, discuss them later the, may, we have just discussed with one our honorable faculty members the five uh, good ethics points and five uh, bad ethics points so we'll just uh, do it later a little later now when we talk about the objectives of research ethics is basically of course the protection part we have to protect the participants their dignity their rights and welfare as i told you for example if we pick up a, a, we are doing research in different diverse fields for example we are doing research in a very very sensitive issue maybe we are talking about the acid victims so definitely we have to guard their uh, you know their right their dignity their rights and uh, we have to be very very careful about their welfare for example if so for example if, if the second objective it says to make sure that the research is guided in a manner that helps welfare of people groups and civilization as a whole if you are doing any research on a very national level if you are doing anything on the international level so definitely we have to keep in mind that we do not harm anybody the third one happens to be that we have to inspect the particular research the event the schemes for the ethical reliability considering issues such as the controlling risk protection of privacy this is very very important the participants who are helping us to do our research our research is incomplete without data maybe it is a, basically the primary data and the secondary data so we uh, we as a uh, uh, freight uh, academicians we both know what is the difference between a primary data and a secondary data so protection of privacy is very very important when we are doing any kind of primary data when we are trying to collect any data with the help of primary tools we have to be very careful that we do not divulge the individual details to anybody because any information it can be misunderstood by others and at times what happens is you know there are people who make payment to the participants to collect the data that is also very very unethical on the part of the uh, researcher that we are forcing the participants to tell us something we are forcing them we are we are luring them we are giving money uh, to them so definitely this is not the ethics and of course uh, we are talking about ethics so there can be different kind of ethics as i told you there can be something which is related with personal professional environmental normative meta there can be different kind of ethics for example if i talk about personal ethics if i say for example if i'm going on the um, on road and if i found a wallet of somebody so am i going to keep it in my pocket or am i going to search for the real owner of the uh, owner of the wallet so that happens to be the personal uh, ethics so definitely we have to understand that any event which is taking place we have to ensure what kind of risk are we facing and whether uh, we are uh, respecting the privacy of the people or whether we are not respecting the privacy of the individual then this is all the research now therefore it is a code of guidelines now in now in the uh, in the uh, when we talking about in the research process for example what are the ethical considerations we should make as a researcher for example if we are talking about the conceptualization and design of the study then in case, then in that way that we have to identify the risk that one is going to be exposed to either the researcher or the participants and in case if there are risk how we can help them to mitigate them now for example you know in news 
also maybe in television also and you know a news channel you know you might have seen that you know if anybody is giving an interview maybe their face is darkened maybe they are sitting their hair with their back and then they are talking about why because this is all related with the kind of risk that they are exposed to they don't want their faces to be exposed to the people so that is a kind of a risk and how it has been mitigated by um, blurring the picture or maybe uh, covering their hair covering their heads so definitely any kind of research we are doing we admit the uh, ethics are at the time of conceptualization also maybe and then second is when participants are recruited how how they are getting informed where how to get their consent and of course the right to privacy how many of them have consented to give us the data or reveal their information or whatever information we are uh, trying to get because the kind of research we have it will be having a bigger impact in case if we are talking about the scientific research it is going to be generalized in case if it is social science research definitely you know there are different eight steps that one would be follow that would be followed then during the intervention or measurement procedure to which participants are subjected again here at the time of uh, you know once we have got the uh, we have got the participants how we are going to deal with them what kind of questions are we going to ask this is all something ethics like for example if you if it somebody happens to be a stranger we are not going to ask very personal questions to the person the person because it is out of our ethical behavior so once we have got the participants we have to understand what kind of a relationship they have with the society they have with the person because we have to respect the human dignity we have to ensure about the confidentiality and there has to be a free flow of information and the informed consent i will reiterate the word informed consent that is when the researcher is giving us the consent okay the person is going to give us the information there is no duress there is no compulsion on the participants to give us the information because we are all trying to minimize the ill effects where um, maybe when we are doing any kind of research uh, maybe biomed um, biomedical research or any kind of research we have to be very very sure that you know the person gives the informed consent the person is giving his consent freely okay? Okay, they are going to help us to collect the data. Then, in the release of the result, obtain protection of the confidentiality and anonymity. Definitely, if the result is there, what kind of research you are doing? If it happens to be a central government research, it can be published. If it is a state government research, it can be published. If we are doing the research as a researcher, so definitely we should not do anything which is not ethical, something which is untrue. You are trying to portray a wrong picture in front of the society. That is why whenever we, uh, we, uh, you know, whenever uh, we are doing research. Research. We are always doing literature, literature review to find the gaps, and in that case, also the we are authenticating the research that has been done earlier to what an extent it is holding true. And lastly, when the when the results are declared, we have to ensure that. Um, any data that you have it is of some benefit to the people or to the society in case if you're doing any uh, may, maybe nsso uh, organization they're doing data maybe anybody is um, talking about the population data that collecting information on population so definitely that would be utilized for a, a larger purpose so any data that we have that we we ensure that it should be utilized for better purposes then uh, ethics revenue evolution if we talk about ethics you know it is just not in india but in it has been in the the different parts of the country also uh, you know if you talk about the great um, philosophers maybe if you talk about aristotle if you talk about uh, plato or maybe in case if you talk about a hindu mythology the ethics um, uh, they have been very very important right from the time immemorial now for example in our in hindu mythology there have been lot of ethics which have been discussed told in the big epics of ramayan and mahabharat and maybe uh, maybe uh, there they have been different greeks if you talk about the western culture you know the ethics can always trace its history uh, if, uh, related to the greeks uh, to the plato and the aristotle and so on and so forth so there the, this is ethics is not something new but very very long back now now since we are talking about research i have given you a better outview what is the research in our personal life or maybe in a professional life or maybe the business life or maybe the environmental however when we talk about ethics in in terms of um, our research uh, we have to be careful about our respondents because if the respondents are not there we will not be able to collect data and once we are not able to collect the data our purpose will get defeated uh, uh, of doing the research so an ethical code of uh, code of conduct must 
consider the following that the data that we are collecting as a researcher it should be correct it should not be manipulated um this is when something very very important then we have to understand that these respondents they have a certain right now these respondents they have the right to uh, privacy they have the right to choose. They have the right to choose which question to answer, which question not to answer. You cannot duress them. You cannot, um, uh, uh, you know, put compulsory put a situation on them. No, you have to answer. So they have the right to choose, right to the safety against the kind of risk. For example, you should know what kind of risk the person is exposed to and how we can mitigate those risks. And definitely rights to be informed. A respondent has the right to know why are you collecting the information, how this data is is going to be used what bad effect i am going to have what are the risks i'm exposed to in case if i give you the uh, data and of course uh, how this data will be utilized by the researcher so in case if respondents ask and uh, ask these questions from the researcher so it is out of the ethical behavior that the researcher should tell them that okay your data will be quite private you have the right to choose the answers which questions to answer which not to answer your information would be confidential it will be safe and of course if you wish to know anything from me as a researcher you are most welcome to know it then uh, we talk about the principles ethical principles of research for example there are a number of uh, um, ethical principles that it talks about right from the honesty right from integrity for example if you can see there are so many uh, ethical principles which have been written this is one of the most important slides of all these slides reason being because as a researcher we have to focus on these principles only for example if i talk about honestly so definitely uh, since we have talking uh, we have talked about the social science stages so the any data which we are reporting we have to be honest the results the methods the procedure so we don't have to fabricate we don't have to manipulate we don't have to falsify or we don't we have we don't have to misinterpret so the, here the honesty is required on the part of the researcher researcher now one thing i one has to understand that you know if you are unethical also there is a, there are repercussions that one can face but it is something which will that will come from within you know your gut feeling will say no i don't have to be unethical in this because in the initial um, in the beginning of my presentation i told you that ethic is something the code of conduct code of conduct or code of behavior something which is a very very private affair of the researcher even if you're falsifying the data or even if you're misrepresenting the data or even if you are fabricating you know your gut feeling will not uh, tell you to do, do that so one has to be very very careful in that regard then they can be something related with integrity integrity is something that you keep up to the promises and the agreements which you have made with the respondents we don't have to back uh, we don't have to come to the back uh, step uh that okay we are going we are not going to divulge your data and later on you are divulging the data that is something which is known as the integrity so uh, here these are the uh, principles which i am talking about the honesty and the uh, integrity integrity is something which is related with the promises and the uh, agreements that one should live up to then we talk about the uh, objectivity for example any kind of data that we have again we have to be quite uh, quite objective in the way that the researchers they are helping us to collect the data there is an informed consent they, this is the autonomous right autonomous right of the uh, respondent whether they want to help us to give in collection of the data whether they are ready to give us the data whether they are not ready to give us the data so we have to tell the participants in case if you give me the data it, it would be really utilized for this purpose in case if you're not willing okay don't tell us because you know privacy is something which everybody is entitled uh, to so we have to respect that as a part of our uh, uh, ethical behavior then it talks about um, the respect for the person or the respondents of course uh, the autonomous the person whosoever is the is the uh, person he or she may be vulnerable to the various consequences they they may be more vulnerable to the cause or harm so we have to be quite uh, careful about them then Beneficence, another principle of research is that we have to keep in mind the maximum benefit of the participant. And it says that minimum harm, harm minimum mitigation of the risk is very, very important in our uh, ethical research. Then it says uh, protecting the subjects. We do not have to harm the people. We don't have to risk people by, we, we, if, if anybody is giving us some information, he or she may be risking his or her life. So we don't have to collect data in that manner. Then responsible publication, for example, as a 
researcher we do not we don't have to publish the same paper to two or three places it there should not be such kind of a publication that should be there then protecting the anonymity it means keeping the participant anonymous that means we do not have to disclose the name of the person's caste creed sex what who what who has given what information for example if i talk about the income level so now income level is different for different kind of people i have got the income level of 10 people so i will not be discussing okay he is earning 50000 no no she is earning 23000 so that is what it says the ethical says that a principle of ethics says that we have to be protecting their anonymity we do not have to disclose the information of one person to the another person then it talks about the confidentiality of course the information that we collect the personal records any personal information if you're talking it has to be very very confidential and of course um, uh, uh, you know the kind of data that we collect the person should have the informed consent they have the right to know why the, we are collecting data what what for what purpose it is going to be utilized and of course uh, they are free to ans ask any question and as a researcher we should be uh, ready to answer them any question then there should not be any kind of uh, discrimination where on the basis of caste, creed, sex, or maybe other demographic factor uh, that, okay, uh, maybe what kind of whatever research you're doing, there should be non-discrimination. This is what it, it talks about. Then it talks about the openness. That means um, the uh, uh, people, they are free to share the data, result, idea, tools, or the resources. And of course, one of the most important or striking feature as a researcher can has that they should be open to the criticisms and the feedback and the new ideas. If anybody is giving them the criticizing, there's something uh, criticizing their research. So that criticism or feedback, it should be taken in a healthy manner. Then it talks about the justice. Of course, the justice should be done to the different kind of people who are helping us to collect the data. The justice should be done to the people who are compiling the data. No, no falsification, no manipulation. All those things, they have to be taken into consideration. Then the main principles that we talk about is basically minimizing the risk of harm. Anybody um, as a contributor who's giving you the data, he or she should be protected. And uh, def definitely, the uh, as a researcher, you should not violate the uh, confidentiality clause. And uh, definitely, there has to be something which talks about that people, they should get their consent. OK, we are ready to share the data with you. The, there should not be any misleading practices uh, that should be adopted by the um, researcher that, okay, on the front page, you said, okay, no, 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 data will not be disclosed. And as soon as you get the data, you are just, uh, you know, um, you are giving that, uh, sharing that data with everybody. So this should not be a part of this. So no kind, no psychological harm, no physical harm, no kind, no kind of risk so on and so forth should be uh, adhered to and of course as a participant they always have a right to withdraw may they can always say that i do not want to continue giving you the data then informed consent is that of when the person is informed why the data is being collected who's the researcher what will be the purpose or where this data will be used and in case if they if he or she will give the data what kind of benefits uh, can come to the society on the whole or maybe the kind of research it, it all depends upon your research topic and uh, and when they uh, they are assured that the data will be kept confidential so at that time, uh, they can always give you the consent. OK, I'm ready to share the detail because, you know, data basically means it's just not one information. You know, you're trying to collect information from a larger population, you know, that when we do different kind of sampling or when we are uh, dividing our, our, our audience into different groups. So it is a large number of people we are talking about. We are just not talking about the individual. So this uh, the, uh, the topics, the, the, the points that I'm telling, they will be applicable on a larger front. Then confidentiality, I told you, confidential, confidentiality in terms of the data. Participants, they should be rest assured that, okay, their data will not be going out, except it will be utilized for the purpose uh, which the researcher has told them. Then avoiding the misleading practices, we do not have to be deceptive. We do not have to be misleading. We do not have to give them the false assurance. Um, we do not have to give them the false information. We don't have to be the false people. And of course, the wrong messages, they should not go to the uh, people at large. Then, uh, as, I as I told you, that they always ha have the right to withdraw. Any participant who feels stressed out or in case if he, he or she wants to discontinue giving the data, they're most welcome to 
withdraw that is why whenever we collect any kind of questionnaire we have so many missing data in our uh, uh, questionnaire so whenever we are trying to analyze our result we have to take care about the missing data we have to take our care about the uh, questions which have not been answered then it talks about the additional principles it talks about the protection of the vulnerable group of people from basically when we talk about vulnerable group b basically means people who can be easily affected by that um, uh, data for example it could be related with the children it could be related with the elderly people it could be related with poor people so on and so forth then when we talk about the skills definitely uh, the as a researcher there should be ethical skills that should be a part of it for example there should be honesty integrity no falsification no manipulation no misrepresentation of the data uh, and however there is a kind of a social responsibility also on the part of the researcher that they always strive to promote a social good and prevent the social harm we have to be very very careful that in case what whatever research we are doing it should be it should be um, for the group, social group and there should not be any kind of harm maybe the public or maybe anybody anybody whosoever is involved in that so our, that should be uh, important that is an important part then this is all about the consent informed consent that i have just spoken about that before starting the day information before starting the study uh, we can talk about uh, to the respondents during the study and uh, at the beginning of the study all sort of information the risk and the uh, factors and the principles and anything which is related with them they should be well aware of and it says that they should be aware about the risk they should be aware about the benefits they should be aware about the aims and objectives of the study they should be aware about the confidentiality that they, they should be aware about that it is an informed consent that is their participation is voluntary there is no uh, duress on them there is no compulsion on them and of course they should also know that in case uh, if there is any injury caused to them because of the uh, exposure of the information then what are remedies uh, what remedies are available to them and then it says that um, the advantages of research ethics is definitely uh, when we are keeping such ethical principles in mind whenever we are conducting our research definitely we are following the norms we are following the uh, value of research and every researcher has the responsibility that research is very valuable it is free from the uh, uh, conflicting points it is ethical it is legal it is scientific and of course we have to ensure that there is um, it should it should not violate any of the rules and regulation so uh, the, when we follow the ethics uh, we are accountable for what we are doing it uh, we are um, accountable for the social and the moral values. Of course, uh, for a cooperative study, we have to understand that there has to be trust, there has to be respect, there has to be support uh, when we are talking about research. Ethical norms, as it says that, you know, uh, it, it, it also help us to conduct the public upkeep for the research. In case if, if you know, uh, for example, in uh, discipline, uh, we talk about the red hot stove rule. Now, in case if you touch the red hot stove, you know, you will immediately take back your hand and you will again not put the, your hand in the red hot stove. In that similar fashion, if a respondent feel, um, if, he, if he or she is cheated or a group of people are cheated or their data is falsified, misinterpreted or maybe diverged, then the, the confidentiality uh, clause is not kept by the researcher definitely it is a big dent for the entire research um, fraternity so um you know because you know it is just not that you stop doing the research there would be somebody else also who would be carrying out the research that was that is what we talk about in the in our research projects so we have to do our research in such a manner that it can it is worthy and it is reliable and we are able to win over the trust of the uh, research participants but however there can be certain uh, uh, limitation of the research ethics for example there can be certain psychological um, risk there can be certain social legal and economic risk uh, for example you know where, for example i was just talking about the ethical behavior for example if a ceo is getting late for the meeting so is he is he is supposed to break the rules so he is in a dilemma whether to break the rules or whether to reach um, the meeting well on time so they, these are kind of you know the limitations that one has to feel uh, there it's a kind of a limitation uh, in the ethics what one should follow now for example there can be you know different groups who can be uh, who can uh, who can get suffered because of certain research in data 
so how we are going to deal with them so at times they can be traumatic events that for example is written in the psychological risk for example a questionnaire may perhaps signify a risk if fears traumatic events are happening that are really traumatic so there are different kind of risks that people are exposed to in case if, if we are collecting data or if we are doing any kind of a research in case if we are following the discrimination aspect, then also it, it is something which is bad and something it, it can help um, something, you know, in case if you are doing a research, maybe in a very, very remote area, maybe in a very, very risky area. So definitely it will have a toll on your health system. It will have a toll on your psychological being and also everybody will be uh, put at stake. So these are the limit uh, limitations of our research ethics. Now, now, how can we ensure ethics at different steps of research? We have talked about the eight research uh, uh, steps. So definitely we have to understand that, you know, now who are the stakeholders, how we are going to get the data from them. And uh, we have to be true. We have to do some justice to them. No falsification. We have to respect their privacy, confidentiality, and uh, we have to be ethical from within uh, as a personality. You, we have to develop that personality okay, that we are ethical with them. Then it says that um, uh, another way of looking at research ethic is by looking at the unethical research uh, conduct. What is basically done? For example, we are uh, deception. You know? For example, issues of full disclosure. We are not giving them the full information. We are misleading the people who are up our participants. We are not um, identifying the proper method of findings, or maybe we are manipulating with the result. There is fabrication, there is falsification. And of course, uh, maybe uh, for in terms of publication, we are publishing the same paper, maybe at two or three places. Or maybe uh, maybe we are conducting research that does not have a scientific base. Uh, base. So these are the things which are uh, related with the unethical research conduct maybe for example these are something you know for example i have been talking about that you know we are not respecting uh, the vulnerable group in case if we are collecting data how children or maybe the aged people or maybe illiterate people or maybe people with the lowest uh, low social status how can they be affected we are un we are not bothering about them but we should bother about them and of course uh, at times uh, for example if i told you anything which is related with environmental environmental uh, ethics with something which is related with our human beings our nature we are inconsiderate towards them so in case if we have such kind of things that means we are showing unethical research conduct Again, uh, there should not be any plagiarism, uh, embellishment of your ideas, falsification, fabrication, fraud. We should not cheat people. If you're doing, if you're cheating people in any regard, definitely uh, this is something a big dent on your own personality. Then, then there, there is non-compliance of the regulatory guidelines. We are violating the law. We are not following the safety rules. We are uh, using, uh, we are not using, utilizing the funds for the proper purpose. In case if this project has been sanctioned to you, we are miss, you are misusing the funds. So all these account to the unethical behavior, and maybe the uh, inappropriate authorship at times. You know, a class fourth student cannot write a research paper. In case if a class fourth student name is given, that is something which is inappropriate. Then um, uh, something which is related with fraud, something which is related uh, the data you are you are you are giving the data which is not authentic, which is misleading, which is fabricated. One has to avoid all those things. <laughs> then. <laughs> Now we are talking about the ethical and uh, ethics uh, behavior. Now, what are the things that lead to the unethical behavior? It is the ignorance of the researcher. People at times, people are unaware. They out of ignorance, they do something. Maybe uh, they could be. Uh, we are not sure what to tell people, or maybe we are, we are ignorant uh, about the uh, research or the data. So, if anything is anything which is being done out of ignorance, it can be granted once, but not every time. You cannot be ignorant every time. So that is one of the reasons uh, of the unethical data. And it says that um, uh, fundamental ethics are like um, we have to understand that we have to respect what kind of benefit it can provide to the society on a large, maybe the children, maybe the old age people, maybe the illiterate people, maybe the lower strata people, and whether we are doing justice with them or no. So ethical research must conform to the national and international accords and the prescripts. There are international bodies also at times who are taking for um, uh, taking care of this. For example, there are IRB, that is the Institutional Ethics Review Board. So they are taking into cognizance um, what kind of ethic is being done, whether the ethical behavior is being followed or not followed so these are the principles that we talk about the justice that we talk about the respect we talk about the beneficence 
how uh, the um, for example the researcher is responsible for the mental physical and the social well-being of the participant throughout the study uh, how we are respecting their privacy how are we getting the consent from them how we are taking them into con uh, confidence level and so on and so forth and of course we have to respect everything so these are the principles um, uh, ethical principles that we have to follow in terms of our research then it says that you know there are different kind of how this uh, uh, research has taken place so there are different uh, conventions which have taken place and place and then uh, different fields maybe biomedical or maybe um, our social sciences so we have got these origins uh, of our research from different ways so it says that what um, the members of the research ethic committee looks in for your ethical projects for example if, when we are part of the ethical uh, society so definitely the respect and dignity of the participants the confidentiality uh, what kind of um, risk and benefits these people will be exposed to or maybe uh, how these people at large uh, will be getting affected whether the person who is conducting the research uh, they have the uh, professional competence to do that or no for example if i told you class 4 the student if he or she starts writing a research paper it would be quite unethical and of course uh, we have to we have to have the uh, informed consent that the people they should be ready to give their information Mm -hmm. on their own we don't have to force them the coercion or maybe the undue influence or maybe the um, you know uh, out of the undue influence is basically out of your out of your mm -hmm. position that you are holding the other one is going to give you the data and the people who are going to uh, suffer it and lastly it says uh, it talks about the uh, how to uh, submit a proposal for the ethical clearance uh, the points the principles that we have talked about in terms of respect in terms of privacy in terms of benefit risk um, risk and so on and so forth have to be kept in mind and lastly it says that education uh, educated person is a person who has learned to learn and change so even if we are researchers and even if we have been in the habit of following unethical practices uh we have a chance to change and we know that we do not have to do any kind of research which is in conflict of our intervention in a conflict in a conflict of our interest um and uh, we have to be very very careful we don't have to do any kind of misconduct which is the violation of the codes that have been specified by different organization um in basically in terms of our professional uh, research Uh, because um, as a researcher we owe our responsibility towards the society we owe our responsibility to the people we have to follow the norms of our conduct of our uh, research and um, of course uh, as a responsible person as a responsible uh, researcher as a responsibility of the institution we have to be very very careful that we do not conduct any kind of research which is unethical which would be, uh, which would bring a disgrace to yourself to one self or maybe to the organization on the whole we have to follow uh, all the principles that i told you earlier uh, uh, in terms of our research because um, we are getting our papers published and big organizations they are a part of our um, uh, research journey maybe it is UC, ugc or maybe iccsr or maybe mhrd maybe anybody so our research should be something uh, which is free from uh, these parameters and because um, you know uh, again we have talked about the ethics they are basically the guidelines which tell us uh, the truth and how we can keep our promises so uh, definitely we have to have a very very uh, keen eye on our ethics because you know for example i have been talking about number of examples maybe right from the ceo or maybe if i if i talk about the lawyer uh, one of the ethical behavior of a lawyer is that okay he has to safeguard his client but unethically he know that my client is uh, wrong so that becomes an uh, an unethical uh, behavior that his client is um, guilty so a lot of um, a lot of examples related to ethics and morality can be given but of course we know that basically as a researcher we have to do the right thing in the right per right perspective keeping in mind the various principles that we have discussed um uh, because we are holding a professional responsibility and once we are uh, holding a professional responsibility it is very very essential that we collaborate with others and we are we share our knowledge for the benefit of of everyone 
be it your employers, be it your employees, be it your society, or be it as an economy on the whole. So if we are conduct, if you or me, anybody who is, um, uh, who has not been following the ethical codes of our research, so definitely we have a chance to learn and change, uh, uh, change for better. So it said that uh, make excellence a habit, and it says that how far we can go in our ethical behavior, it all depends upon us, that how ethically we are conducting our research for uh, keeping in mind the various parameters. And these are my books, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, uh, thank you so much. Be ethical. Do not um, get confused what is ethical and what is not legal. Do things which are legal as well and things which are ethical as well if you want to succeed. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.